it's been a little while. I'm excited to share something that has consumed the majority of my spare time the past six months. Before we get started though, I want to be upfront. This project isn't quite finished yet. It's around 60% complete, but I couldn't wait any longer to share it. This undertaking has turned out to be bigger than I initially thought, likely way too big for one person, especially an amateur like myself, to tackle alone. But I've been dedicated to working out the wrinkles and ironing out as many kinks as possible. Today I'm here to give you a sneak peek at what I've accomplished so far. By waiting until I have a minimum viable product, I'm hoping to ensure that this endeavor is on the right track before I ask you to invest your time in it. This video is meant to be a visual companion to the white paper I've been piecing together. But don't worry, I won't be drowning you in technical jargon. My aim is to break things down in a way that's easy to understand for a wider audience. I'll be using a few visual aids and real-time examples to help you grasp the concepts I've been wrestling with. At the heart of this exciting project lies Camlitcoin, a groundbreaking blockchain protocol that's set to revolutionize the world of large language models and distributed computing. But what exactly does that mean? Let's break it down. Camlitcoin introduces an ingenious, trustless, and incentive-based system that brings together lightweight clients and a vast network of compute nodes. These compute nodes are the backbone of the operation, tirelessly working on completing input tasks submitted by clients. And they're not just working for free. Each compute node is fairly compensated for its contribution. But how do we make sure that the output generated by these compute nodes is accurate and valid? This is where the innovative random, autoregressive, Subsampling for token integrity checking or RASTIC algorithm comes into play. The RASTIC algorithm acts as the guardian of authenticity, ensuring that the generated output can be used as a fundamental proof of work. Anybody can swiftly verify the output's credibility using RASTIC, adding an extra layer of confidence. The Camlid coin protocol is meticulously designed and built upon a peer-to-peer -peer network architecture. It's an evolution of Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. However, Camblade Coin takes this concept and adapts it to the specific needs of distributed large language model computation. The result is a protocol that combines the best of both worlds, the robustness of blockchain technology and the potential of cutting edge open source language models. Throughout this video, we'll delve deeper into the inner workings of the Camblade Coin protocol. We'll explore its structure and how it provides a safe and secure way to decentralize large language models. Additionally, we'll shine a light on the current challenges and limitations that we're facing along the way. Trust is the cornerstone of any decentralized system, and when it comes to complex computational tasks like autoregressive models, it's crucial to ensure that the results are accurate. But how do we trust the results when the computation is outsourced? This is the problem we're tackling head on. In the current landscape, outsourcing the computation of autoregressive models lacks a critical factor. Verification. Imagine a scenario where the incentive lies in fulfilling as many requests as possible, regardless of the accuracy of the computation. If we didn't hold participants responsible, cheaters would quickly overwhelm the network. Cheating is exceedingly lucrative up until the whole network collapses as cheaters, who don't put any computational work into the responses, can fulfill a magnitude more tasks than their honest counterparts. This creates a dilemma. How can we guarantee that the results are trustworthy? Clients faced with this challenge have limited options. They can either choose to perform the computation themselves, which is often redundant and time consuming. Alternatively, they can distribute the computation among multiple nodes relying on a consensus model, but this leads to inefficiency through duplicated efforts and significantly higher costs. This is where our solution comes into play. RASTIC addresses the need for an efficient verification method for the outputs generated by autoregressive models. It presents a novel approach that maintains an asymmetric difficulty, making output generation complex, but output validity checks fast and efficient. While generating the outputs remains challenging with a current complexity between O of N and O of N squared, verifying the accuracy of these outputs becomes incredibly efficient with the complexity of O of 1. The RASTIC algorithm is the bridge that connects the desire for provably accurate results with the necessity for efficiency. For an illustrative example, let's say you decide to outsource your math homework at school to a classmate and offer to compensate them $1 for every answer. Let's ignore calculators. How do you verify that they did it correctly without expending any more work than you saved by outsourcing it? 
If you solve and check every problem yourself, you save zero effort and spend money in the process. Perhaps you give it to a second or third friend to double and triple check it. But now we need to spend a ridiculous amount of money on redundant effort. In this case, we could check a random subset of the answers. If those are correct, we can rest assured that statistically, effort was expended across the entire set of the problems and our friend didn't just make up guesses to make a quick buck. Autoregressive algorithms, as previously discussed, are interdependent, wherein every single step takes every previous step as an input. To compare to our analogy, imagine if every math problem used every previous answer as input. What the results in is that if you get any one answer wrong, it has ripple effects across the accuracy of the rest of their answers. What this means for us is that by verifying a subset, we are in fact checking more or less the whole thing. However, we need to do this randomly. As if we only check the last answer and they know that, they can simply just take all their guesses and use it to produce a seemingly correct last answer. If our friend doesn't know which answer we will verify, they have no choice but to do the whole thing as statistically, they will be caught. Any guesses will skew subsequent answers. Rastic isn't just a theoretical concept, it's a practical solution that ensures that the computation has been executed faithfully without the burden of redundant computations. By introducing this algorithm, we're addressing the problem of trust head on and paving the way for a more secure and streamlined approach to autoregressive model computation. In the upcoming segments, we'll dive deeper into how the Rastic algorithm works, the technology behind it, and the impact it has on the overall feasibility of this project. Let's now turn our attention to the central algorithm that anchors this project. In simple terms, this algorithm revolves around selecting three random words, or more precisely tokens, from the text and confirming their validity. This process involves examining a small representative subset of the output to ensure the overall validity of the entire set. The efficacy of this approach lies in a fundamental property of GPT models, autoregression. Visualize tokens as the building blocks of language, comparable to words in a sentence. Natural language generators like ChatGPT, Llama, Alpaca, or Vicuna all fall under the umbrella of autoregressive models. This characteristic means that these models generate tokens one by one. Each new token is added to the input before passing through the algorithm again for the generation of the next token. This sequential and recursive process continues until a special end token is reached or the token count limit is obtained, at which point the algorithm halts computation and provides the output. This mechanism explains why transformer models produce output in a word-by-word -word fashion, as opposed to waiting for the entire generation to conclude before revealing any output. To provide a relatable analogy, it's akin to using your phone's autocomplete to predict the next word but on a vastly more intricate scale. The autocomplete algorithm here is far more sophisticated, capable of considering an extensive array of contextual information. Consequently, each token is intricately linked to those preceding it, forming a recursive structure. Furthermore, tokens are generated in a highly deterministic manner. Given the same input sequence and seed, the output token completion remains consistent. Rastic leverages this understanding to rapidly verify the authenticity of output from an untrusted source. As discussed earlier, we randomly select a token from the output and verify its authenticity. We then inspect the first token in the output to ensure its coherence with the input. This step safeguards against outputs that may appear valid but lack alignment with the input's context. Next, we assess the second to last token in the sequence to determine if it indeed corresponds to the end token provided the token's limit wasn't reached. If the token limit is reached, another random token is examined. This measure prevents instances where outputs are accurately generated, but truncated prematurely by malicious actors cutting corners. By adopting this approach, we're able to validate outputs consisting of thousands of tokens. Moreover, the number of tokens subject to validation can always be incremented for added assurance. Importantly, clients aren't burdened with the responsibility of validation. They remain lightweight, needing only a wallet key and relevant code to interact with the network. The Rastic algorithm can be more rigorously defined as follows. This is nothing more than a mathematical representation of what we just discussed, so don't let it scare you. 
The exact process for outsourcing verification, if required, is outlined as follows in the white paper. To outsource the verification process, the client follows the steps as outlined below. Sending verification requests. The client initiates the process by sending verification requests to nearby nodes. Each request includes crucial information such as the job ID, seed, input and output arrays, and a selected index for verification. Computation and hashing. The neighboring nodes perform computation on the output value corresponding to the provided index. Subsequently, they hash the computed value and transmit the resulting hash back to the client. Verification and comparison. Upon receiving hashed output values from the neighboring nodes, the client conducts verification. It ensures that the hashes match the corresponding output values in the output array. This process establishes a trustless framework where the client can delegate the verification of computations to nearby nodes. The responsibility of completing the validation process falls upon the full nodes, guaranteeing the overall security of the network, a benefit shared by all nodes. Importantly, the client doesn't receive any free computation. It only receives the hash of the single token completion. This strategic approach prevents clients from attempting to exploit the system by sending verification requests one token at a time. By adhering to this mechanism, clients can confidently rely on neighboring nodes for verification without compromising the network's integrity or security. Barring cyber attacks, a compute node would need majority control over the network in order to fake both the output and the verification. Cyber attacks, where a node is isolated from the rest of the network, can be prevented by the need to stake tokens in order to participate in the network. Now let's assess the likelihood of encountering false positives using the RASTIC algorithm. To calculate this probability, we can refer to the following approach. For clarification, in this instance, positive results are generations deemed to be accurate. Considering a token sequence of a given length, each element consisting of 50,000 possible tokens, if we randomly select three indices in each sequence, the probability of finding matching numbers at all three indices is given by the following. This calculation demonstrates that the chances of encountering a false positive in the context of RASTIC are remarkably low even when utilizing a rather small vocabulary size. These findings emphasize the algorithm's robustness in minimizing the occurrence of false positives, bolstering its credibility as a dependable mechanism. Moving beyond the theoretical realm, let's delve into real-world performance. As evidenced by the graph presented, RASTIC demonstrates a notable reduction in the time required for message verification compared to its message generation counterpart. Nonetheless, upon closer examination of this practical scenario, it becomes apparent that RASTIC's verification process can sometimes surpass the duration taken for the initial message generation in the case of short generations. This occurrence can be attributed to an absence of optimizations, necessitating repetitive and redundant data reloading. While theoretically there exists no imperative to reload data into RAM, the employed text generation library proves inadequate for this specific task. Substantial modifications are still needed to tailor it for such purposes. In addition, the algorithm presently operates in a single-threaded manner within the Node.js environment. Theoretically, all three verification checks could be executed concurrently given that they lack sequential dependence, unlike the original generation, and could be suitably adapted for parallel execution. Notably, this concurrent approach remains unimplemented in the current MVP project. The plan for the final version entails a transition to a swifter, more robust, and possibly more future-proof language such as Rust, C, or Carbon. In the realm of economic viability, we looked at enhancing processing speeds via GPU offloading as well as conducted a comprehensive cost analysis with a glimpse into future cost trends. Our investigation unearthed a notable milestone in processing speeds by strategically offloading select layers to the GPU. This advancement is found in the development branch of the Llama.cpp library. By incorporating this approach, we managed to achieve a greatly improved speed of up to 30 tokens per second, even when factoring the associated overhead. Extrapolating from these findings, our projections suggest the potential generation of around 40,000 tokens per hour assuming the outstanding job pool is saturated. Shifting our focus to the economic lens, 
We conduct an evaluation of the profitability for participation in the network using the electricity cost pegged at 17 cents per kilowatt hour, a little on the higher end. Guided by this metric, we computed the cost of generating 1,000 tokens to be a mere $0.00134. Considering the average measured power draw of 312 watts, this cost-benefit analysis gains further significance when weighed against commercial alternatives. Notably, some open source models approach an impressive 90% accuracy level in comparison to the benchmark set by OpenAI's GPT models. Envisioning the trajectory of our protocol, especially within power user circles leveraging specialized hardware, we anticipate a future reduction in costs. This prospect becomes even more pronounced as ongoing technological strides continuously elevate the efficiency of computations both driving down costs for users and increasing profitability of compute nodes. While compute nodes will earn less per token, it will be balanced out by their equivalent ability to generate more tokens per hour. All the while, electricity costs more or less stay static. In conclusion, our exploration of economic viability showcases the cost effectiveness of such a protocol. This symbiotic enhancement of processing speeds and our assessment of costs underscore a promising future for our protocol. As our solution garners wider acceptance and integrates with more advanced hardware options, the prospect of cost reduction becomes a tangible reality, riding on the coattails of ever-evolving computational innovations. The pivotal merits of our approach are encapsulated by the following key benefits. At the forefront lies the concept of a censorship-resistant framework, which stems from the distributed and openly accessible nature of our models. A formidable challenge inherent in hosting language models pertains to censorship control. When a singular entity holds the reins of model hosting, it inadvertently becomes the solitary arbiter dictating permissible content. However, the practical implementation of such an oversight presents intricate challenges. The conscientious endeavors to filter out harmful content, though well-intentioned, often result in overzealousness, as we witness in contemporary privately held models. As an AI model, this zealous censorship not only treads on matters of openness and liberty, but also tends to constrict the capabilities of current models, rendering them progressively confined in their scope beyond rudimentary tasks. The innovation we present, a distributed and open model, effectively tackles this conundrum. This paradigm signifies a democratic stance in charting the model's abilities and redistributes accountability in an unprecedented manner. Within this construct, the network serves as a conduit for interactions, where an individual clients shoulder the responsibility for their own generative outputs. This decentralized architecture paves the way for collective decision-making, allowing users to influence the model's functionalities and generated outcomes. By dispersing accountability and culpability across numerous nodes, the network cultivates a culture of shared ownership, diminishing the consolidation of power and nurturing a milieu of inclusivity and democracy. A compelling advantage emerges from our expansive network of compute nodes, the capacity for concurrent inference. This facet harnesses the ability to execute multiple inferences concurrently, an operational aspect often infeasible with existing models due to their size or design limitations. To illustrate, envision a scenario where an initial inquiry seeks insights into task structure followed by subsequent inferences aiming to elucidate detailed procedural steps for executing said task. Leveraging a distributed computational framework, this paradigm lends itself to simultaneous management of these ensuing inferences. This transformative capability markedly improves efficiency and responsiveness, offering an avenue for faster generation of complex, multifaceted responses to multi-part inquiries. For example, we could have an initial task that asks to outline the steps needed to build an e-commerce website. Next, we can send each of these tasks into the network simultaneously where they will be computed in parallel. This will provide an n times faster process for fulfilling our inquiry rather than having to wait n times longer for our inquiry to be answered sequentially. This provides a quite literal unlimited potential for answering complex, multifaceted tasks. This process is famously demonstrated in the AutoGPT project, where complex tasks are broken into bite-sized pieces and each piece is handled individually. This process can be expanded in a fractal manner, where tasks can be split into smaller and smaller chunks recursively. 
The context of even the most complex models, such as GPT-4, will lack the ability to tackle extremely complex tasks such as building an entire leading edge website in one go. Websites such as Amazon, YouTube, or Twitter are built on code bases in the millions of lines in length, far beyond the capabilities of any present model. While our protocol offers remarkable advantages, it is not devoid of challenges, with privacy emerging as a significant hurdle. The current protocol necessitates the disclosure of inputs to the network, introducing a potential vulnerability to privacy breaches. Encrypting the input and unveiling it only when a node responds is one possible mitigation strategy. However, this approach doesn't eliminate the disclosure requirement for verification, leaving the input susceptible to interception during this process. A potential resolution to this quandary involves computing only the initial layer of the network before dispatching it for completion. This tactic involves retaining only a small fraction of the model locally, with weight and bias averaging in a tensor ensuring that the input remains irretrievable. Nonetheless, this solution is not foolproof, as an individual with a copy of the model could execute the computation to access the complete unencrypted output. A strategy successfully employed in specific contexts, such as healthcare, is maintaining the last layer of the model in secrecy through a central authority. This method facilitates outsourced computation while safeguarding sensitive data, such as HIPAA regulated information. Regrettably, this approach isn't tenable with a fully decentralized system since every node requires a comprehensive copy of the model for verification. The ongoing quest for an autoregressive, zero knowledge proof complete model remains elusive. Promising avenues exist in various domains, warranting further exploration. Privacy preservation remains a pressing issue within the protocol, necessitating diligent research and innovative solutions. One prospective remedy to the issue of input disclosure lies in the realm of homomorphic encryption, a technique that permits operations on encrypted data. This avenue holds potential for securely outsourcing autoregressive models. However, the present state of fully homomorphic encryption entails substantial computation overhead. Encryption tasks that typically take mere nanoseconds, like additions and piler encryption, escalate to seconds, minutes, or even hours when scaled. This lag is untenable within the realm of distributed neural network computation, where encryption, computation, decryption must conclude within seconds. Noteworthy initiatives led by entities like OpenMind strive to realize these principles. Implementing such methodologies, however, would necessitate significant effort and modifications to the existing model architecture. While the prospect of homomorphic encryption remains promising, its feasibility and integration into our distributed protocol demands rigorous exploration and tailored adaptions. Within the existing implementation, a notable challenge arises in the form of repeated data computation. This redundancy is inherently vital as a countermeasure against malevolent nodes and in light of the network's spontaneous structure. While this approach guarantees swift responses from available nodes, it also engenders inefficiencies in task delegation. Consequently, avenues may exist for refining this process, curtailing superfluous computation while upholding the network's robustness. This is a dynamic area where ongoing research in the domain of distributed systems could yield innovative solutions. The original language model LAMA, introduced by Facebook, was initially intended solely for approved research purposes and strictly prohibited commercial use. This limitation was an ongoing concern throughout the development of this project. It's important to clarify that the models we are using are not direct copies of Facebook's, but rather highly modified community-trained derivatives. Community derivatives, such as Stanford's Alpaca or Vicuna as seen in this project, and yes, Guanaco and even Camel models exist. This customization introduces potential legal complexities that we need to be mindful of during the course of our project. We contend that the compensation we provide is primarily for access to computational resources rather than exclusively for the model's output. Our model has undergone extensive modification, distinguishing it significantly from the original Facebook release. The determination of whether commercial use occurs lies in the hands of the end user and how they employ the computational resources. For instance, 
If one rents a server from a cloud provider to execute the model, the cloud provider's service is not inherently designed for commercial usage of the model. However, if the model is utilized as a backend for a paid website, for example, it would indeed constitute a commercial application. Fortunately, during the development of this project, Facebook introduced Llama 2, making it available for commercial purposes for businesses with fewer than 700 million monthly users. Nevertheless, it's essential to acknowledge that the associated licensing terms are far from open source and may grant Facebook the discretion to amend or terminate the license in the future. Crucially, our project has avoided dependence on Llama-derived models. Anyone can upload an entirely new model to the network, alleviating our reliance on any specific model. Furthermore, we have aspirations to explore the possibility of training models directly on the network in the future. However, it is important to note that achieving this efficiently remains a challenge yet to be solved, and as of now, it remains largely unattempted on our end. In summary, our project is committed to adhering to the evolving legal landscape surrounding AI models, adopting a proactive approach to mitigate potential legal risks while remaining flexible in our model choices and keeping a close eye on the future. While the intricacies of federated averaging warrant further exploration, it embodies the promise of a democratic model development that transcends traditional boundaries. Looking ahead, our trajectory involves transitioning towards a proof of stake paradigm. This endeavor is challenging for a new point, as without a substantial market cap, a minority could wield disproportionate voting power. Nonetheless, as our coin stabilizes and garners a robust market cap, we aspire to follow in Ethereum's footsteps and execute this shift. Such a transition heralds the end of the energy-intensive proof of work and paves its way for a more sustainable and environmentally conscious system. As transactions burgeon, the blockchain faces a pertinent challenge in efficiently handling high traffic, low quantity payments. To address this, the evolution of a level two network becomes imperative, building atop the existing blockchain infrastructure. This auxiliary network could empower rapid micropayments. Operating through payment channels, layer two networks handle numerous off-chain transactions. These channels facilitate multiple transactions without every single one necessitating a main blockchain record, reducing the strain on the primary chain. This innovation is a necessity in order to handle the millions of transactions per hour one would expect at even a moderate level of scale. Bitcoin's comparatively basic blockchain can only handle transactions numbered in the thousands per hour, with steep financial overhead to boot. Through the interplay of emerging technologies and novel paradigms, we aspire to not only address existing challenges, but to revolutionize the landscape of distributed computing. The practical realization of a centralized iteration of the network outlined is not just feasible, but also remarkably attainable in the current landscape. Embracing a centralized model holds the potential to significantly streamline operations and curtail intricacy by sidestepping the need for a blockchain infrastructure. In this centralized rendition, the network pivots around a trusted moderator, typically an entity such as a company or a website. This moderator undertakes the responsibilities of overseeing payments and enforcing operational guidelines. While the network maintains its role in verification processes, the central authority assumes the mantle of processing transactions and implementing necessary penalties. Transparency and accessibility are cornerstones, allowing the central authority's actions to be justifiably audited and rendered extensible to the network's participants. The transition to a centralized framework addresses numerous challenges tied to consensus and blockchain integration. For instance, issues linked to duplicate task completion and efficiency can be mitigated. The central authority, functioning as a task scheduler, strategically allocates tasks to the swiftest and most reliable nodes first, ensuring a larger pool of nodes remain available for further tasks. This strategy optimizes task distribution prioritizing rapid nodes and fostering an equitable distribution of workload. This centralized version promises a simplicity and efficiency, unburdened by the complexities inherent in decentralized models. It offers a pragmatic stepping stone, enabling the network's concepts to be executed and refined in real-world scenarios. While it may deviate from the decentralized ethos, the centralized approach's viability underscores the flexibility inherent in the model, catering to a range of practical context and progression routes. Auto-regressive models, such as large language models, will define the next decade. 
Our primary goal is to further democratize large language models. These models have been trained on data created by the collective efforts of humanity and thus belong to the people. A concerted effort must be made to prevent large language models from becoming the exclusive property of monopolistic corporations. We believe that these models should be a force for increasing equity, empowering people from all backgrounds to share and implement their thoughts and ideas without the influence of their ethnic background or economic statuses. These models are fantastic learning tools that provide access to a wealth of knowledge. We are committed to promoting the development of open source large language model projects and believe that a collective effort can quickly surpass the advancements made by private entities. We strive to contribute to the ongoing democratization of language models and work towards a more equitable future for all. We acknowledge that open source large language model projects have rapidly caught up to those developed by large corporations. And we believe that collective efforts can quickly surpass private ones. By fostering an inclusive and collaborative community, we aim to advance the state of the art in autoregressive models, making them more accessible and beneficial to all. Oh, 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 oh,